What's good team? Welcome to another Small Dreams Coding tutorial where today we're going to be talking about front-end versus back-end. What's the difference? What do we use each of them for? How do we go about programming each different style and how do they interact with one another? So it's just going to be a really comprehensive and practical explanation as to front-end development versus back-end development. Obviously full stack development is the combination of each. So if you love all of it, then that's the path I'd recommend taking. But without further ado, we're going to start off looking at front end and back end by taking a look at a node and express server that I have prepared for this video. So if we just take a look at the code infrastructure just here, the first thing we're going to see is that I have a server.js file and in here we have a package.json file. This package.json file is going to manage some of our node or NPM dependencies and all that good stuff. It also allows us to define scripts that we can go ahead and run on our node runtime. And you might have guessed by the name of this particular file that the code in here is server code. Now server code is typically associated with backend development. Backend development obviously has a lot more breadth and depth than just writing servers. However, it's a good introductory point to distinguish one of the key differences between backend and frontend code. That is where the code is executed. So in this particular instance, if I come to my terminal and write npm run develop, we can see that my server starts up on port 8383. Now this is a console log just here, and this console.log is inside of a JavaScript file. Now the fact that the console is printing on our own machine, our own hardware, is one of the key indicators that this is backend code. Backend code executes on our machine, but more specifically, it is not executed on the client or front-end machine. Now for the client, the client is often the browser that, for example, a user, a foreign user might interact with our site or our web infrastructure. They will have a browser that might be a Chrome browser, that might be a Firefox browser, and that is going to execute JavaScript that gets sent over to them from the server. And all of that logic is going to be run on their computer. Front-end development is the development of that code that gets executed on their machine. Server code is the code that gets executed on the server or our protected machine. So if I were to deploy this, let's say to AWS or Google Cloud Platform or Azure, we would be able to go check the logs and the logs would show that this has printed on that hardware, our server hardware or our rented hardware. And this code just in here is not accessible by the client or the front end development. Now from here, what we can do is make a couple of changes to our server file. This is all back in development. We can say app.use express.static and pass in public. Now this just here is going to allow us to create a public folder. And in here, I'm going to create an index.html file. If we just generate some boilerplate code for that, and here I can say hello world, and I can at the bottom of this body script just before we exit here I can have a script tag and in here I'm just going to say console.log this code is executed on the browser now this line just here is going to remove the default app.get at our home route so I'm just going to change this to API and now instead when a user accesses our code at localhost 8383 if I just bring up a browser, here we have our browser. I can come to localhost 8383 and we can see that I am served this index.html file. Now, one thing we'll note is we did not get anything consoling in our console down here. However, if I come over to the console in the browser, we can see that we have the print statement or the console being executed in the browser. Now, if we were to deploy this as an you know, in this case, we're currently actually dealing with a full stack application. We have a server that deploys or serves up a front end project. The server code, anything in here, let's say we had a confidential API key is equal to whatever it might be. This code is safe inside of our server and our server is protected. You know, we're probably are the only ones that know how to authenticate with that server. However, anything in here is accessible and visible on the user's machine. And that's simply because that's where the code gets executed. So our server and our backend code serves up this front-end project. 
Now this is equivalent when you develop with a, you know, let's say you're using React, it's a common front-end JavaScript framework. You might think you're just doing front-end development. However, when you deploy that project, it is a separate server that serves up that front-end project for you. The server is just another set of back-end code that is specifically developed to serve a React project. However, as we've seen just here, we can equally develop our own back-end code and the functionality of that backend code is to be a server that serves a front-end project. So that kind of summarizes the first key difference between front-end and backend code, where front-end code is code that is executed on the client machine and is often to do with a user experience. You know, for example, when a user accesses a website, they have that running on their client and they can interact with it and it's an experience that they directly interface with. If we come across to the backend code, the backend is what's going on behind the interface that they interface with. So they get to experience this front end project that is served from our backend code that's essentially under the hood. It's on a different machine and it handles everything in the background to send over the information to the client machine so that they can interface with the front end project. Now we can actually develop a communication system between our front end and back end code just here. For example, I could say async function fetch data, just like that and say const URL is equal to slash. And we could say const res is equal to await fetch URL. And then we could say const data is equal to await res.json. And now if I call that function, and I might just make this URL slightly more specific, API, we will see that it will get executed on our browser. We can check the network tab. If I refresh this page, we get the network request occurring right there. We get a 200 response code. We get a message back that says hi. And if I were to come down here and console.log data, it just so happens that that message is exactly what we receive in our backend code that we've defined. So we've defined a server. This has a get route at slash API and it responds with a status code of 200 and sends a JSON file with this message. So what we're doing right now is we are executing this JavaScript on our front end application and sending it through. The reason it has to be a network request is because as much as these are both on my own computer, this is analogous to it being executed on someone else's computer a million miles across the world. And this backend code is in some data center that is you know, has a port and IP address, we can access that using this URL. We can send a fetch request to it. The server, which is the backend code, which is on some other hardware, you know, somewhere else in the world, it's protected from the user, receives that network request and responds with some data. So that's all very cool. As we can see that front end code is specifically what runs on the user machine and is what the user interfaces with. And we can program it so that it interfaces with backend code that is private and on some machine that we have defined somewhere. However, that is not the limit of backend code. Backend code can have much more comprehensive and, you know, and there's a greater breadth of functionalities of backend code. For example, in here, we could also have some database interfacing. For example, here I have an image that really demonstrates the difference. So here we have the client machine. This is where the front end code is executed. We have our web server, which is kind of the introduction into the backend code. In some cases you have an application server that's not entirely necessary. But anyway, our web server can interface with a database, which is often used for, you know, storing data, as you might have guessed. And we can respond from the database to the server. All of this is just backend code. And then we can send that backend code from our protected server over to the user's machine and they can experience that in their front end program that we have, you know, set up so that they can interface with or interact with. And so this is a really good graphic because it kind of demonstrates where the limit of front end is, which is basically anything that is client side on the user's machine executing in their browser and back end code, which really can just go off in any direction from here. And so if we expand on this for a second, here we have another graphic that kind of demonstrates what we were talking about earlier. So we have front end programming, which is kind of what we just saw, the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript, everything that goes into the HTML file that we serve on the client's browser and their client browser. 
that can be fetch requests, that can be image editing, anything that goes into the user experience that the user interfaces or interacts with. And then in the back end stuff, we have our server architecture, which we just looked at how we can set up. We have databases, scalability, security, data transformation, backup, everything that goes on that the user doesn't need to be part of, or even the client machine is back end code. Another huge functionality in all of this is developing APIs. So a front end might have to interact with an API. An API can kind of be the interface or the middleman just here. And the back end is where you would typically define that API and give it all of its functionalities. So the front end can just communicate to the API. The API can run a whole lot of logic on the server. We can just do all of this background, you know, programming and functionalities and services, and then we can respond to the front end and say, here is your finished product that you were looking for. Here we have a different image that also kind of talks about some of the common languages that we use in the programming and development of front end applications versus back end applications. So front end programming at its very core is typically a combination of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So if you're looking to become a front end developer, that's definitely where your time would be best spent is learning these technologies. Additional things that could facilitate your front end development is learning Figma development or some type of graphic design or even storybook. And often you'll want to add on to this foundational knowledge with some kind of JavaScript framework. So that might be React, Next.js, SvelteKit, Quick, Vue.js, Nuxt, or you know even Angular. Huge plethora of front-end frameworks that you can learn. React is definitely the most common. That goes for app development as well. So in app development, you're looking at React Native or or it could also be Flutter if you're looking for hybrid app development. And then if we move into the back end code, you know, typically you're looking at SQL, which is a database interfacing language. You could also be de developing NoSQL databases such as MongoDB or Firebase. And as for the common programming languages, we have Java, Ruby, or PHP. Equally, you could have Python with Django or Flask, or you could have JavaScript with, you know, Express, Node.js, and all that kind of stuff. My personal preference is JavaScript because it allows us to write front-end code and back-end code with Express and Node.js. But I definitely think that SQL and NoSQL learning those languages and how to develop those types of databases is critical too. At the end of the day, they're all part of the same system that is looking to develop, you know, applications that a user can use. There's a part that they interact with and then there's a whole lot of logic that goes on in the background that they don't need to see or worry about. Both sides are equally critical and important to develop in conjunction with one another to ensure that you have an efficient and effective user experience because at the end of the day, the user is who you create these applications for. It's often totally normal and natural to have an initial preference towards one or the other, but it is good to have a general understanding of each, even if you specialize in one. And it's equally critical to make sure that you understand how the two interact. And that is essentially just network requests. It's really important to understand the communication protocols that go into communicating information back and forth between the two of them. And it's also good to understand where the logic that you're writing is being executed. So when you're writing front end code, you have to be extra careful because the user or the client has access to all of your front end code. They can manipulate it, they can take advantage of it. Whereas when you're writing server code, they don't need to see that code. That is your own private you know, background functionality that you can program and do whatever you want with. And so with backend code, you don't have to be as concerned about exposing, you know, private keys or private information or anything like that. If you or anybody you know is looking to get into front end, back end or full stack development, the place that I would definitely recommend diving into it is free code camp, free accessible interactive certificates that are very, you know, beginner friendly. They teach you absolutely everything you could possibly want to know about front end, back end development and all that good stuff. We can see that these first three certificates just here are predominantly front end. Even this fourth one just here, data visualization. These three certificates will get you up and running with front end development. And then as we come further down, we can see that they've kind of defined the server side code or the back end development with some relational databases. This is the SQL that we were talking about earlier, back end development and APIs, quality assurance. And then technically you could even move into data analysis or any of this other kind of stuff, which is a totally different ballpark in itself. Equally, there's a whole lot of resources on my channel if you're interested to learn more, so be sure to check them out too. 
Anyway, that's pretty much the whole video. It's just a simple summary to break down what backend development is, what frontend development is, how they differ and how they interact and come together to become, you know, part of a greater full stack application. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and sub. It's super appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.